Good morning, uh, members, members of the government, uh, mayors, uh, lady and gen uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's great uh, to be here uh, with you today. I'm the um, CEO of Savannah Resources. We've been operating in Portugal now since, uh, since 2016. And Savannah really is very much at the, at the heart of uh, the energy transition. Um, as you can see here, um, yeah, we have uh, wind turbines. Uh, on the left uh, and on the right, uh, we have uh, electric vehicles. Savannah and Portugal's uh, lithium endowment uh, provides the sort of the key uh, enabling material uh, that allows uh, wind turbines uh, to power uh, Europe's uh, transportation fleet. I'd like to talk to you a little bit today about uh, natural capital, not only preserving it, but also leveraging uh, Portugal's nat natural capital. My observation is that um, uh, Portugal is blessed with many natural capital um, endowments. Clearly, I'll talk to you today about its sort of wonderful uh, mineral endowment of uh, lithium, but it's also endowed with a wonderful geography. It's uh, the third largest uh, um, economic uh, ec uh, zone uh, in the uh, in the European Union. It's blessed with um, very sort of deep um, uh, renewables energy uh, resources. As Nuno Banza um, indicated, it also has a wonderful um, environment. It also is blessed with uh, wonderful natural capital in terms of um, the, the people of Portugal. And I'd like to talk to you a little bit about you know what I see of that human ability. And of course, uh, as part of the natural capital, all of us, all of us in this room, all of us in Portugal, all of us in Europe, um, all of us on this globe share a single atmosphere. Um, and that is something that um, our company, um, in partnership um, with Portugal, is looking to um, help deliver on a, a climate change solution. Just looking at uh, mineral resources themselves, Portugal actually, and, and uh, largely uh, based around our project, has uh, some of the most extensive conventional lithium uh, resources in Europe. It's, it's a wonderful blessing, it's a wonderful endowment. Um, it's something that we are looking to develop in a responsible uh, fashion. And the, the leverage that comes from it is already in evidence. Um, we've seen uh, two major announcements last year with the development of uh, processing facilities uh, that proposed to be uh, developed by uh, Galp and Northvolt in, uh, in northern Portugal. Bondalti uh, is doing the same. And I think what you're seeing is that um, Portugal, this is real hard evidence of what uh, Portugal is doing in terms of its natural endowment, um, looking to uh, crystallise and synthesise uh, these in industrial opportunities and uh, you know obviously it's our uh, hope uh, that material from our project uh, at Batikas in northeast Portugal is a sort of fundamental foundation for the development of that business here in here in uh, here in Portugal it would be a national tragedy um, if those uh, facilities uh, were fed with uh, material from outside of uh, Portugal I'd like to talk about the, uh, the, um, the uh, geographic capital of uh, Portugal as well. It's on the Atlantic seaboard. Um, the Atlantic Basin is a, a, a massive market. Um, it provides Portugal with uh, a, a sort of a, a port of exit to uh, northern European ports. And this will sort of provide us with the opportunity uh, for um, the downstream products uh, to be fed into the uh, European uh, battery chain. I think the other sort of key thing, and um, that you know, that I've observed um, over the last few years, is really some of the the very innovative work being done by the European Commission and the member states around sort of building um, building Europe's energy autonomy. Um, it's clearly a work in progress. Um, there's still a lot uh, a lot to be done. The recent uh, tragic events in Ukraine have only sort of highlighted the, the good sense of this. And of course, um, you know, we're looking to, um, I, I suppose, work uh, sort of closely with renewable energy sources. Um, it's our hope that, um, uh, uh, that um, our production, our um, scope one uh, emissions will, or sorry, uh, yes, uh, sorry, scope two emissions will be largely in eliminated by using uh, sort of Portuguese generated renewable power. And it's wonderful to see the 20, 23rd uh, Portuguese government um, uh, targeting 80% um, uh, overall uh, renewables um, here in, um, in Portugal. 
Um, you, we're looking to build something that uh, a project that is uh, has a very low carbon footprint. We're looking at doing some very innovative things in terms of uh, the introduction of um, electric powered uh, mineral processing equipment. And it's our overall objective to have a, a, a development uh, of our project uh, that is, in overall terms, um, is net uh, carbon zero li uh, life of project. Not a far distant uh, uh, um, target of 2050 or 2040. I mean, you know, life of project and um, in the short term, we'll be looking to uh, sort of be net carbon uh, neutral um, in, the, uh, in the late 2020s. Um, clearly, uh, the um, energy position of Europe is, uh, is, is critical. I think it's a, a profound uh, geostrategic and geoeconomic advantage uh, for, group, uh, for Europe having uh, this uh, renewable energy capability like the one that you see here on the, uh, on the left. I think it's going to support European industry. Um, it's going to support the European economy. It's going to support European uh, jobs and will provide uh, the European electric vehicle industry uh, with um, a real comparative advantage against the competitive challenge from places like China, even North, in, even North America. At the same time, though, you know, we're very conscious as a, a mineral producer of um, our environmental responsibility. And I, I, we don't talk about sustainability. What we talk about is responsibility. Um, clearly, uh, a, a, a mineral development um, has a physical manifestation. There's no getting around that. Um, this is not the meta, net metaverse we're uh, dealing with. This is the reality. We live in a physical world, and we live in a physical world that's you know, in many ways made up of, um, of minerals and, um, and metals. Even so, um, with our proposed development, we've designed 238 individual um, uh, mitigation or elimination uh, methods of uh, either reducing or eliminating uh, the in environmental impact of our, of our development. We're looking at um, real economy in terms of uh, use of water, energy and, uh, and materials. And um, our idea is to ensure that um, our development has as minimal a footprint um, as possible uh, from an environmental point of view. Um, we're also obviously very concerned about uh, local communities. We've worked up um, a number of what I believe to be very innovative programs, including a, a benefit sharing plan, uh, which will look to uh, fund uh, worthy uh, community developments. We're looking at uh, the development of a community-owned service provider company to um, help us undertake the continuous rehabilitation uh, that we're uh, proposing to uh, take uh, with the mine. Um, and we have a good neighbour plan. Um, and this really all is folding into a current evaluation uh, that's underway at the moment uh, by uh, APA. We've been working uh, closely with uh, APA now in its uh, fifth uh, calendar year of a, a very rigorous and comprehensive evaluation of the environmental features of our development. But uh, sort of moving on to uh, natural capital and, um, and human ability, another observation of mine is that um, you know, one of the great assets of Portugal is the, um, the, the, uh, the, the high level of education um, in the country, particularly impressed by the, um, I suppose, the, um, you know, the ingenuity and uh, curiosity and an ability of young people. And you know, we at Savannah are very much looking forward to harnessing those, those abilities, that enthusiasm, those skills, um, Modern day mineral production is a, is a, a, a quite a high tech activity. Um, you know, we'll be looking at uh, employing people like uh, environmental scientists, IT specialists, metallurgists, social scientists, and you know, we we're looking to build careers uh, for Portuguese. We've had a very, uh, I, I, Savannah is a, a British company, uh, Britain has had a, uh, an, an almost um, 650 year uh, relationship with uh, Portugal, uh, it comes up for its uh, 650th uh, anniversary uh, next year. Um, but I, I think from our point of view, it's absolutely sort of vital that um, as we transition from being, if you like, a venture capital company to a, a major Portuguese industrial company, uh, that we uh, sort of fill out our um, executive team and management team uh, with Portuguese. We've currently got a, a search underway for a country head um, who will uh, sort of lead the development of a sort of comprehensive build out of a Portuguese uh, exec executive staff. 
Um, just moving on to a final point, just the, um, the atmosphere. Um, we talked, at, talked about that a little bit earlier. Um, the, the lithium that we will produce um, will go towards um, uh, supporting the production of between five and 600,000 electric vehicles per annum um, here, here, in, here in Europe. Over the, the life of our project, that means that um, European uh, transport will be able to avoid something like 100 million tonnes of uh, CO2 and uh, glo uh, greenhouse gas emissions. That's very significant. I have two, uh, two grandchildren. I have two more grandchildren on the way. And it's absolutely essential that all of us, each one of us in this room, my company, and uh, we all work towards that uh, common goal of uh, making sure that we deal with climate change and uh, we hope to do that uh, at Savannah with a responsible and innovative development of uh, the Barroso Lithium Project um, as one of uh, Portugal's major uh, natural resource endowments. Thank you very much.